interview was filmed during COVID-19. Even though the speakers may not be wearing masks, social distancing precautions were held with a minimum of six feet. Removing the mask is for the quality of filming. Please remember to continue wearing masks until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm joined with Dr. Su Susan Hammonds-White. My name is Katie Smith and I am a fellow bereaved parent. And today we're gonna to discuss a difficult topic of the different grieving styles among spouses. Thank you, Susan, for joining us today. I'm so glad to be here, Katie. I really appreciate your time and your advice. I know that the different grieving styles among spouses is a difficult one. Everybody grieves differently. And then when you have spouses together, also grieving the same loss, it is hard to sometimes maintain that unit in grieving together when each one does need to also grieve on their own and in their own way. So what are the hardest challenges you see for grieving parents? You know, when I think about um, the loss of a child for, for parents, the, the first thing that comes up for me is the, the incredible pain that, that both people are carrying. Mm -hmm. um, and the, that, that pain is essentially individual. It, although we think, um, we think it can be shared in some way, and there are ways in which talking about it can help and so forth, but it is, it is ultimately an individual journey. Mm -hmm. And that flies in the face of the way that we sometimes think about our, our relationships and think about our marriages, that, that our marriages are supposed to be um, the unit mm -hmm. that, that carries us in some way. And yet a loss like this really has the potential for breaking that unit apart. Yeah. Um, It's it's a it's a hard thing, Katie. Um, as as you know, it's very challenging because in some cases the the situation is such that parents blame themselves or they blame each other. Um, sometimes when there's a, a loss of any kind, not not only loss of a child but loss of of any loved one. There's a there's a sometimes a natural response on the on the inside of the person that says, I have to find something or someone to make make responsible for this, yeah. you know. And all all too often it's the other parent, you know. You didn't do, or you did do, or you should have, or why didn't you, or yeah. you know. There's this mm -hmm. heart, hurt and pain on the inside that that wants to be dumped. Yes. Somewhere, sometimes it goes to the doctors, yes. you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the caregivers or the, you know, they, there's a, an outpouring of <clears throat> mm -hmm. at that person. Um, and anger, anger is part of grieving. You know, it's not, it's not all just tears. Sometimes it's just anger and blaming and how, how could this have happened? And um, so... To recognize that there is that that potential, um, and to do your best to remember that your spouse is not your enemy yes. in this time. Your mm -hmm. spouse is going through something that's just as profound as what you're going through, mm -hmm. but they may be experiencing it completely differently. Sure. You know, we've talked at times about the difference in the way men and women sometimes approach um, the experience of grief. 
in our society, women have a lot more latitude to be able to be more open about their feelings, particularly the feelings of sadness. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much anger sometimes. Right. You know, whereas men, broadly speaking, sometimes are given more leeway about being angry about things, but they're not supposed to cry right. about it, for heaven's sake. Which, by the way, I think is ridiculous mm -hmm. on, on either side. Yeah. You know, we are human. We have the full spectrum of emotions, right. um, whatever those emotions are. And acknowledging those and recognizing them is really important. Let me talk a minute about anger. You know, anger is a normal human emotion. It's basically a shield that says, no, mm -hmm. I don't like this, stop it, it's not okay with me. Yeah. Um, now, the behaviors that go with anger sometimes are not appropriate. You know, if you're angry, you don't want to hurt someone sure. or something or um, lash out in some way. Sure. But the feeling is just a feeling, mm -hmm. just like any other feeling. So, um, parents, there's an old, old, old song from a long time ago. It's called Parents Are People, People with Feelings. Um, and that's what, that's what you're experiencing when you're grieving. You're a person with feelings. And to be respectful of your own individual journey and to be respectful of whatever your spouse's journey is. Um, that would be the best thing to do, the kindest thing to do, yeah. if you can. Yeah, you're right. I think anger is not what people think of when they think of grieving. Um, but it is important to recognize that um, emotion and that it's okay to have that emotion. Yes, and expect it. Mm -hmm. Expected. I mean, That's you've a lost idea. a child, of course you're angry. Mm -hmm. How could you not be angry mm -hmm. um, at it's something that is so not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, not you know, at all. Losing a child, it's not supposed to be that way, but but it is. It's happened. Mm -hmm. And to to honor that experience of of anger is part of it's part of it. It is. Yeah. So if you find yourself being that spouse that is maybe the target of some of that anger, what advice do you have for them to maybe, you know, be, be understanding, be patient, or, or is there something specific that they can do to uh, address that? Um, well, it's not, it's, it's, it's not okay for, for your spouse to make you the target of anger. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is important for you, if you are experiencing that, to be able to say that, you know, I am really sorry you're having this hard time, but it's not okay for you to, to put this on me. Mm -hmm. In other words, you need to have a boundary about that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> you can't just be patient and take it. You really need to say, that's, you know, I understand that you're having a hard time, but... I'm having a hard time too, and I'm, I, it's not all right to make me the target of your anger. Sure. Um, what do you need to do? Do you need to yeah. um, go outside and chop wood? Do you need to go for a run? Do you need to um, just go outside and scream? Yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's okay to do too, mm -hmm. because these are big feelings. Mm -hmm. These are big feelings. The, the feeling of losing a child, the feelings of anguish and loss are huge, and the feelings of anger and fury about it are huge. Um, and they live in our bodies. Mm -hmm. you know, so one of the things I often tell parents is pay attention to your body. You know, what does your body need right now? Mm -hmm. Does your body need to take deep breaths? Does your body need to... Um, really to, to do something physical. Yeah. Um, those are both really important things to do to listen in to what's going on on the inside. Yeah, I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. So 
be respectful of the other's grieving process, but also have that boundary of what's okay and what's not okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense. Do you find that parents have difficulty accepting or dealing with feelings of that anger and or guilt or you know any other kind of or even depression? Do you find that that's that's hard for them to accept that they are having those emotions? Right. I do think that's true because um, we have this message in our culture about there's a certain way you're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even in the, I think this has changed, I hope it has, but the, there's a, a manual that people in, in my field use. It's called the Diagnostical and Statistical Manual okay. uh, that has all the diagnoses in terms of, of mental health and mental illness in it. And um, one of the things that it used to have in it was if you're still having strong feelings after two weeks, you should see a therapist. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that is really, uh, really not right. Right. Because um, that you will have feelings the rest of your life. Absolutely. Basically. Um, now, if the feelings um, cause you to have difficulty going on with your life in some way, then yes, it is time to get some help by all means. Um, but the the experience of grieving is not going to go away. Mm -hmm. It will ameliorate over time, um, but it won't. It won't vanish. Right. Now, I've actually lost track of your question. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it still is important information. Um, no, I was just asking if you find that they have a hard time accepting that they are having those emotions. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I do think that's true. A lot of people have a hard time thinking, feeling that they might be having some depression or feeling that they might be anxious. or um, And these are all normal parts of this journey. Mm -hmm. um, feeling like, I don't want to get up in the morning. Yeah. Um, and I, I have no motivation to do anything. Um, the difference in depression and grief, though, I think, Katie, is important to note. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, there are similarities. Um, there's that feeling of of um, no motivation. Of I'm I'm crying a lot for for just out of the blue. Uh, those are all parts of depression and grieving. The difference in uh, what we call clinical depression mm -hmm. is um, negative self-talk that you're talking to yourself and putting yourself down and feeling totally hopeless and that there's no no reason to go on. And that's if that's not treated, it can get very serious. But that's not grief. Grief is different. Um, grief is loss, sadness, yearning, wanting the, the person back. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not turned on yourself. So if, if someone does have feelings of guilt, that might need to be addressed or... Yeah, right. I was surprised at how much guilt I had, and it really is not uh, warranted. Um, right. But I didn't realize how much it was in there. Right. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The constant and part of part of grieving also is this this um, what I call the world of if if only. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, if only I had such and such. If only this. If only that. Um, and if only keeps you pinned to the past. Mm -hmm. And being able to move back into present time is really important because none of that if only is anything that has any reality today. Sure. You know, you're here now. Mm -hmm. You're in this moment. You, you look around and see the world and see what's here. And you're here with yourself remembering um, your, your child that's gone, or children, and hopefully in some time or place being able to delight in that memory that they lived, that they were with you for a time, and that there were 
wonderful, special things about them that you can hold, even though they're gone. Sure, yeah. That's important. Very important. Mm -hmm. What would you say your recommendations are for spouses once they do lose that? child or children, like immediately, maybe not immediately, but maybe in the days or the months after. Um, do you have any specific recommendations for when they're starting this grieving process? Well, in the best of all possible worlds, Katie, what I would say is that a couple who has lost a child at some point probably needs to talk to somebody um, because it's so easy to become isolated from each other mm -hmm. and marriages struggle um, from, from the loss of a child. It's, it's one of the things that people who do the work that I do Sadly, we often see that it's hard for marriages to survive mm -hmm. um, if, if the couple doesn't make a determined effort to stay in contact with each other in spite of their individual grief. Right. And, to, and it helps to have somebody um, to help with that, um, to, to go forward Absolutely. with that. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work, you know, sadly. Um, but I think that there's a good chance if both people are, are willing to take that step and if they have the resources. I know it's, you know, it's hard for some people to even consider having the resources to talk sure. to a counselor. But there are, there are bereavement groups that can be helpful. There's, um, some people find groups like the Compassionate Friends very useful to to be able to have a place where other parents are understanding mm -hmm. of their losses. Yeah, I think that's important for some parents to be able to connect with others right. um, that have similar stories. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're further in the process. Um, right. Maybe you're right in where they right. are. Um, right. Yeah. In the very beginning, though, it's just really hard to think of anything other than yourself and your loss. Absolutely. It's just hard. And then if you have other children, you're trying to help them as well. It, it's a, it's big. It's a big thing for, for a family. Yes. Um, to They're, go forward with. Yeah. You know, we've often talked, Katie, about the, the idea that um, feelings are like a river. Mm -hmm. You know, feelings are always running. They're running whether we're aware of them or not. Mm -hmm. it's, and there's a, there's a way in which if we can dip into that river momentarily and just pause a minute and say, what's happening now? Where am I now? And just acknowledge it. You don't have to, it's not a big deal. You don't have to go into a big, big, big overthink, yeah. overthinking, but just what's happening now, okay. That's where I am right this minute. Because if you don't do that check-in every now and then, the feelings can kind of dam up on you. Yes. And then one sooner or later, they're going to appear. And maybe at a moment you don't want them to. Yes. You know. Um, and you may have you may not have any control over that. They may just appear. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's okay too. Yes. It just happens. Mm -hmm. Easy on yourself when that does happen. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Do you see common themes between how men grieve and women grieve? I know we, we kind of touched on it a little bit about how society kind of, um, you know, lets women, I say lets, but is more acceptable of women, you know, crying or being sad, whereas men maybe are more um, associated with being angry or, mm -hmm. or, or know, shut down. Exactly. More shut down. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, I, I feel a great deal of um, concern and empathy for 
the way men in our culture have been um, moved away. Mm -hmm. You know, we there's that uh, big boys don't cry mm -hmm. message. Um, I think that's I think that may be loosening. Uh, um, you know, people of my generation got that message very strong, but maybe, maybe in yours it's a little better, and maybe for our youngest, you know, people coming up, it yeah. may be really loosening a bit, and I hope that's true. Um, I was just thinking something about there's a. It's not just it's not just that men get to express anger. There's a, there's a strong message, I think, in our culture for men that says, um, provide and protect. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when, when your partner is in a situation where they are feeling so, like your wife is feeling so distressed and they can't do anything about it, mm -hmm. um, sometimes that can be very challenging for, um, for some guys. So, um, just just over and over and over again, the message I have is just be kind to each other, mm -hmm. and understand that you're both going through tremendous pain with this loss. And that it may come out differently. And it may be very different. I mean, the way the way your husband grieves, it's not yours, and vice versa. And it's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I think that's important, very important to remember. Mm -hmm. um, are there any resources that come to mind that you can advise uh, grieving spouses or grieving partners um, that could help them in that process of losing a child or children? Well, I think that bereavement groups are really helpful. Um, I think that, but maybe not too soon. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't jump right into a group um, maybe four or five months on. Yeah. Um, might be helpful. The, the particular kind of, of um, couples work that I do is called Imago mm -hmm. Relationship Therapy, and there's there's a there are some good um, video resources you, okay. that you can look up online that talk about a particular way of listening to each other. Okay. And one of the one of the ways that can be really helpful in terms of communicating with each other is what we call mirroring. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, you you're talking maybe you're talking about the loss. Um, your spouse can be really helpful to you if you just say, so what I'm hearing you say is um, that you're really feeling sad and lonely and wishing that, that, that he was with us right now, rather than trying to talk them out of the feeling. Okay, that's important. Is the idea, you know, just ex Accept the feeling. Mm -hmm. um, don't try to talk anybody out of what they're feeling. Just be, okay, that's where you are right now, and I'm here. I'm just here with you right now. Yeah, that sense of knowing that you've been heard, I think, is right. really important, and that, like you said, someone is there. Right, right. I think that that probably more than, um, more than anything is the, the message that a spouse can, what you can give to each other is, I recognize you, I see you, I see the pain, and I'm here. I can't make it go away, but I'm here. Yeah, I think that's maybe the best advice you can give for one another, for anybody, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say couples can expect during, um, I mean, we, we know the grieving process never stops, um, but what would you want parents to know, or spouses to know, and then the very few, you know, 
the days after, the months after, and I think what really doesn't get talked about is the years after um, losing uh, their child or children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we talk a lot about the first year mm -hmm. um, and the anniversaries and the, the, mom the moments that are going to, you know, it's, it's the birthday, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas or Hanukkah or, or whatever um, your religious tradition is and the child is not there. Um, but the difficulty is that that happens every year. Yes. Again and again and again and every year the child is not there. Um, some people seem to expect themselves to be over it. You know, well, the year is over, why am I not better? Yeah. You know, and some people say the second year is harder because the child is still gone. Yeah. You know, and you yeah. have to face that over and over and over again. My experience is that, that losses don't go away, but the quality of the experience changes. Um, one of the things that I've seen over and over again is um, kind of in the, even after years, in, in my own experience losing a parent, um, sometimes a couple of weeks before the, the date of the anniversary comes up, which I've forgotten, you know, something happens physically in my body. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's wrong here? Something's going on. And then I, oh. It's the anniversary that's coming up. So my body knows, even if my mind doesn't know. Um, and I think that, that parents and spouses need to recognize that this is likely going to happen. Yeah, that's such a good point. That's something I don't think people um, talk about very much. I mean, mm -mm. It happens to me, too. I, you know, I, I don't forget the maybe the, the days that they passed away, but it's not necessarily on my radar as their birthday or something, but there is something physically yes. and mentally yes. that I'm just like, why am I feeling this way? And my yes. daughter's mentioned the same thing. She's like, you know, it came out of nowhere. And yes. So, yes. Yeah. yes. Our bodies know. Our bodies remember, even when our minds consciously don't. Mm -hmm. So to be just aware of that and gentle with yourself yes. mm -hmm. um, as as you go through this process. You know, we talk about grief recovery sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like that word. Mm -hmm. We manage it, we learn from it, we uh, go on, we go forward, but we are, we are different people um, when we have lost a loved one, mm -hmm. particularly a child. Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. It's okay to be different, to to incorporate that loss into our own being and the way that we live and go forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. This has all been very helpful information. I really do appreciate it. Um, I do want to ask one more time, you mentioned Imago, is that I am? I am a G O Imago Relationship Therapy. Some people find it very helpful and for couples that might be a resource because there is a lot there's a lot of good information online about it. Great. And I would also mention John Gottman's work, um, who has done really wonderful work around helping couples. Okay. Thank you again, Susan. I really do appreciate it. You're very welcome.